Guys, Kev here, and well, we have a competition on our hands. I'm gonna grab a sip of my cherry cola, my little mini one. And uh, speaking of mini, you guys have seen the uh, nip slip prototype from Kubi Knives that I've been absolutely stoked on. Well, Guess what showed up today? QSP's version of the nip slip prototype. Ooh, yes they did. Oh, yes they did. QSP crushed. Very, very excited about this one. Carried this one today. Um, with all the OEMs, we used three OEMs for this to prototype it. This is the second one to come in, so Kubi delivered their prototypes, and then QSP just delivered theirs. We did different colorways on each of them, just to kind of mess around and see. And it was kind of based on what they had and what we had with them, because we've sent materials and whatever. And in this case, um, orange dark matter, orange pivot collars. So I'm pretty sure that's aluminum to be orange. But depending on um, what color we go with, these collars would be aluminum, titanium, right? Um, you can't do uh, orange titanium unless you coat it or something. Dead centered. And oh, absolutely phenomenal walk and talk. It is absolutely amazing. There are some slight differences I'm noticing just handling them. And it's interesting. Um, we basically sent the same design files and everything to each of the OEMs, but they, they have their own little processes, which is funny, right? And then there's little things they can and cannot do, and it, and it really can change these minor details. Obviously, this design overall looks extremely similar, right? Most people would probably be like, yeah, same knife, right? Um, but there are Differences I've noticed just carrying it for the day. Now, the biggest one, in my opinion, uh, the thing that really makes me excited about the QSP version is they're able to do a full height hollow grind. So you can see that plunge grind right here that goes all the way to the spine. So they're able to do that, which gives you a even deeper taper down. Um, and it's just a cool factor, in my opinion. I mean, look at that grind. It comes up here, comes out to here, then dips back down where the swedge starts. I mean, look at that. Yeah, dude, that is just phenomenal work. Now, you can see they have the horizontal lines here. Um, and that's the only spot they have that. I'm thinking, if possible, maybe we can get them to do it along the swedge as well. That would look pretty cool. Um, but either way, it looks gorgeous the way it is. Um, plunge grind looks good. I mean, you have this 50, 50 trail. So no matter what you do on these, you're going to have a lot of sharpening life. It looks like, but you can see the plunge grind. It's interesting when you look at these, how different they are. It's kind of wild, really. Guessing it's both the same kind of cutting edge. Well, let's see. No, look at that. The blade is longer. What? Am I crazy? Let me look at it in real life. So if I go edge to edge, you can see QSP has a taller uh, edge bevel. Um, Kui has a smaller one. And then edge to edge, I mean, it makes it look like the knife is longer from Kui. But if you line up the pivots, they are the same. Very interesting. So they definitely took some liberties here, it seems like. So do we have a shorter cutting edge, shorter blade on the QSP? Um, let's measure. I'm just going to nerd out here a little bit, guys. So from tip to handle right here is just at two and a quarter like we wanted. This one is tip to handle two and a quarter. So tip to blade, let's try to figure out a way to do this. Tip to the edge there is 
one and uh, oh god, this is difficult. So there's one and three quarters. It's the next eighth inch, and then another sixteenth after that. So that would be what sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen sixteenths, if I can get that right. I hope that makes sense. I think it's one and thirteen sixteenths. This one. That edge is coming in at, there's one and a quarter. There's, uh, well, there's that last eighth. So 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 sixteenths. If I think I'm getting that right. So you can look at it here. See that little notch, right? And hopefully you can see what I'm pointing at. There's the uh, three-quarter line, and it's that eighth of an inch after that. And this one was a little bit longer. That's interesting. I'm not sure why that is or any of the, that kind of stuff. Um, just machining differences, I guess, on their stuff. I don't know. I mean, you can see it looks like the plunge here starts later on the QSP version, and it's a little closer to the handle here on the Kubi version, but then you have a lot more of that choil or sharpening area here from the, the edge termination to the plunge on the QSP one. This is all hollow ground here, where on the Kubi one, it's a little bit of a shorter gap there. I don't know what that means exactly. The choils, let's just see, maybe QSP just made the choil bigger. So if we line it up from the edge termination to where the choil ends right there, right? Let's see if we can get that lined up well. We are looking at just under an inch. I mean, it's a damn near close to an inch, but it's just under an inch. So let's see on this one, we line that up. Oh, yeah significantly smaller interesting stuff so sorry this is me nerding i just got this today so bear with me i'm, I'm doing some research here um you can see right here edge termination right here is where that choil ends you see that right where it starts to swoop back out that is where that choil ends so like right there we'll say okay on this one, it almost extends all the way out to an inch. Look at that, right there. So you get a larger choil on this one, which in turn would make it more comfortable for some people. Now for me personally, my fingers are small enough that this choil fits my hand pretty well right but this choil i mean they both fit really well you can see when i choke up and lock in i have all four on no knife sticking out when i choke up on this one all four no knife sticking out overall lengths let's see if those are the same we are at whoops we are at 5.4, which is exactly what the nip is. This one is at, oh man, this seems a little shorter. Let me just make sure I'm not, there we go. I mean, it's damn close. Come on, Kev, just line it up. Right there. Right, so five, there's five and a half. So it's just under, I'm guessing 5.4 would be right there. So this would be around 5.3, right? That notch, let's just double check this one. This one comes in just a touch longer than that. I mean, it's really damn close. Um, I noticed that this has a slight contour to it, like we asked for, but it does feel 
more flat on the scale. Um, pretty sure it's got a slight contour. Let me grab the old ruler everybody loves. Well, I mean, the edges are for sure. Yeah, it's got a slight contour to it. This, on the other hand, feels like it's got a significant contour to it. I mean, you can see how much I have to do this. Like, I don't know if it's easy to tell on camera, but maybe you can see it. Like right there, you can see down the scale, it has that little bit of contouring where this one just is a little flatter to me. So it feels a little better, I think. Uh, weight wise, there's no milling in there. There's no milling in there. But somehow this one feels a slightly lighter. Um, which is interesting. I need to get the rust off of this one. I forgot I... It, Kubi does D2 on their prototypes where QSP will use whatever you're going to use. So I think this is S90V. I'm going to grab my shipping scale. Now this is damn close to dead on. Um, but I've seen some people weigh the nips and they come in for me. At two ounces, I've seen them at 2.1 for some people. So, I mean, it's damn close for a shipping scale. This one is at 2.5 ounces. Now, that's a good difference because you look at it, 2.5. The one we just weighed, this is another carbon fiber knit. One, there you go, two ounces. The titanium knit, 2.8. Okay, so then you have this one right in the middle, 2.4, 2.5. Here's the QSP one. I'm going to guess it's right around 2.2, 2.1, 2.1 versus 2. I want to get the cord off, 2.5. Let's just slide it around a little bit there, 2.4 to 2.1. So that's a difference. I mean, that's, you know, 0.3 ounces. That, that's interesting. That could be, oh, you know what it is? It's the hollow grind, right? Because you have that full height hollow where this one has the hollow to here, right? Um, you have a larger uh, fuller on this one than this one. I really need to clean. Let's see if I can clean it up with this real quick. guys don't have a rust eraser, I highly recommend it. Looks like I got someone here too. Just make sure you test it on something first. If you don't want to, you know, possibly have rusting issues. Or sorry, finish issues. So what I do is I just hit it with the rust eraser then clean it off with alcohol to get in that groove a little bit i got some on here if it's a slip joint like this make sure you you wipe it down thoroughly blow it out before you close it because you don't want to get any of that rusty racer stuff in the, the into the handle So now the blade looks clean, no rusting. It's just some dirt or something, I don't know. But inside the grooves. And that was like that for probably a week or so. I mean, I noticed it at Blade West and I forgot to clean it till right now. And it's, so held up pretty good. Um, but yeah, this is D2, so. So this is, again, um, 
Another difference, something we thought maybe was related to where we placed the screw. You can see that screw right here. This one will help determine how strong your spring feels, right? There's other factors, obviously, but it's one of the factors. And if you move this closer to the pivot, it'll get stronger. If you move it farther away, it'll get a little bit weaker on the spring. So if you look at something like a Vanish from Kvist Blade Works, that screw is a little bit closer to the end of the handle. So you get a softer spring. Okay. Uh, if you look at something like a Jack Wolf, you're going to see a stronger spring um, because it's a little bit higher up. Um, there's a lot of other factors, but anyway. So we thought maybe this was too far up this way because this one's really strong. Right? We're going to have to, if we go with Kubi, adjust the spring tension. But then I got these. And they feel perfect. I mean, it feels absolutely perfect. It's got great bounce. I mean, it's easy to one hand close, but it doesn't feel soft in any way. I and mean, it's literally the perfect pull, in my opinion. It's like a seven, something like that. Six and a half, seven. Um, easy to pinch, crisp but not aggressive, right? I do have another one from them. And this one does feel a little different. I don't know if it's a little tight or it needs to break in a little bit, um, but you can hear it. But on the closing, it's a little bit softer where this one jumps, right? Ah, that's pretty damn close, honestly. So very good on the consistency, I'd say. Yeah, I think this one just needs a little oil or something. You can see they're pretty dirty in there. These are straight out of the box. I mean, I'm I'm impressed because the Kubi ones, I definitely had to break in. When I first opened them, I remember messaging Colin, and I was like, dude, Kubi botched the walk and talk. Like, it's just not good. Um, and then... I just was like, all right, let me try to break it in or use it. And then I fell in love with it. So, you know, it, that's something you got to deal with with slip joints. Uh, we can look at the tang geometry too and see if they're any different on the two different versions. Let me just, I just want to put a little bit of oil in these. I'll clean all of them up, I guess. Something uh, interesting to note is the uh, placement of the tang to the spring. I'll show you that too. Um, okay, so we got them all cleaned. Now, I like to use KPO Heavy for this. With ones this small, it might be good to just use original, but put a little dot there, and then I just touch right here. On that corner, I touch right here on this corner, open it, and then touch this side and this side of that corner, and then work it in, and then we'll move to the next one. Just a little bit, I'm not trying to go crazy, so. Just put a touch there, touch there, open it, put a touch here and here. And this will let you guys listen to the walk and talk on these. Excellent. Then we got this last one. A little bit, put a drop there, drop oh, there, and then here and here. All 
right. So there we go. Got those all oiled up and everything. But yeah, um, just crazy. They're both very good. They're all very good, I gotta say. Um, this example is a little bit just, just not as snappy from here to here. So that might be something that just has to break in. Or, you know, it's just a different, you know, they're not all the same. But here, look at the tang, all right? Let me zoom in on this um, so you guys can see, right? Do you see where the spring meets the tang? It's pretty flush, right? So just slightly, it's hard to tell. I think the spring sits just over the tang, right? And then here you can see it's flush. It's flush. It's flush, right? Very well done there. On the Kubi, the tang sticks way above the spring. Hopefully you can see that well, but you can see the tang of the blade sits up over the spring versus on this one where it's almost the opposite. It is the opposite. That spring sits almost flush with the tang. This one, that tang just sits way up over it. So we think that has something to do with how strong it is. Because it that spring has to, you have to push that spring out so much more to get that first rotation through. Then you got to push that spring out to get it to pop into the open position, right? By the way, they did a great job with the spring as well, the... Um, it being flush and everything, but it has to do that extra work. See how far the spring pops out on this one. Doesn't have to do as much work. Again, you can see how far the spring pops out, right? This one has to pop out all the way to there. See that? That's his furthest point right there. This one, right there. Definitely less. So, that's a difference. Um, the pivot is a difference. Um, Kubi can mill our logo, and QSP can't. They have to laser it. So, whenever it's a laser situation, we just leave the logo off. Because um, we don't think it looks good lasered on there. Um, this looks good. Pretty good with the milled. We can always change that. The colorways, don't worry about that. You know, let's say you like the blue with the blue and the everything. We can do this version here. It's just, you know, we're just doing prototypes. Um, so the inlay, I mean, QSP is getting incredibly good at inlays. This is damn near flawless. Honestly, I think it is flawless. I think those transitions are flawless with a contour. It's impressive, guys. It, it, I mean, their work is really impressive right here. I am stoked. Now, the price, that's going to be a difference. You know, we're going to have to see what... Um, that's a factor, too. We're going to have to see what QSP gives us as a final price. But, um, you know, with Kubi... With their usual pricing, at least it, it should be similar to the NIP all built out with S90V carbon and everything. We could probably sell this for under 200, right? 175, 199, something like that. Um, Kubi or U QSP tends to be more. Um, as far as I've noticed, the same build, right? Let's say, um, call it the NIP, right? If we wanted to do this build with qsp our price to you guys is going to jump up it would have been we sold these for 175 retailers obviously coupons and everything they would have probably been at least 199 had we done qsp maybe more um and that's just you know they cost more so we have to charge more this is just how business works um so that's a factor right you know how good is the quality for the price you're getting or is it worth you know using a different oem maybe they're not 
you know, 100% is good, but you can sell it for less. There's a lot of factors there. Um, but, I mean, both of them are fantastic. I really, you know, I like that this one has the contour a little more. I really like that feel in hand better. Um, I do think this one might be a little thicker, though, because of that. Um, the Kubi one tends to be really thin. I mean, here, 0.386 inches. This one's going to be around 40 a bit, 41. So it's not like it's thick or anything, but I can notice the difference. But that's because it has the contour. Had they not added the contour as much, it would feel like this one. But before I got this one, I never questioned the ergos or anything. This feels fantastic in my hand. Um, but this does melt a little bit better because of that um, choil. Now you're losing a little bit of that blade edge, I guess, right? Didn't we measure that out? You get a little less blade length here, but it's very marginal and uh, you get a bigger choil. So with, you know, the trade off there for, for people with larger hands, you're going to get that, that longer choil. Um, I've never felt like this one was too small of a choil, but I am close to being on the edge there where this one I do have that little bit of space so that might be beneficial for some people the full height hollow grind that makes a huge difference for me um that removes some weight too that's probably where the weight difference is um and maybe they mill out deeper for the carbon versus this I don't know that's an interesting thing. Or maybe, you know, you have the hollow grind that's, you know, uh, you know what, like a 0.1 ounces you can gain there. And then you have titanium collars versus aluminum. Maybe you get 0.1 ounces there. And all of a sudden you're getting close to two, three point ones. And you're, you know, um, you can see the springs look a little different. They're not any uh, different thickness wise, but the way there's like a chamfer here on this where this is just cleaner. I like that look. I like both looks. You can see around the inlays, it's a little bit of a different like design sort of. Very close, but it does look a little different. Um, the hump here, like from here to here is shorter versus here to here. You see, that's actually a big difference sort of. See that right there? See that difference? I don't know where that came from, how that change happened. You know, again, we sent the same files, but looks like this little scallop is a little bit deeper, comes out a little more on this one versus this one on both sides there. Nail nick or long pull, slightly taller on this one. Slightly shorter on this one. So, just some little tiny differences. Um, you're looking at all T8 on both. Um, at least, I assume, actually, hold on. Should be, and uh, if not, we would definitely be changing that for production. But this does look like a T6 to me. QSP. So, this is a T8, right? I think they snuck in T6s down here. I mean, uh, I will have to ask them. Maybe that's just what they had, so they thought we'd be okay with it. But we definitely want T8s. Now, on a knife like this, really don't recommend you take it apart. Because um, it's going to be really hard to get back together. Especially a smaller slip joint like this. You have to push the spring up and you know, um, so I wouldn't recommend it anyway, so it might not matter, actually, but we do like T8s better. If they can fit them in there, we would just have them do that. I like the look of them better, too. It looks a little bit nicer than these. Very marginal stuff, but hey, so there you go. Um, I'm excited about these from QSP. I think they did a wonderful job. Um, we have one more set to come in from Concept. Uh, they're taking their good old time. So 
you know, we'll see when they get here. I'm, I'm antsy to order these and get them going. Um, but we want to make sure, you know, we make a good choice. And you know what, guys? Just because we don't order from QSP, Kubi, or Concept doesn't mean they're not fantastic because these are both. I would, I would be happy as a clam if you sold me either of these for $199, right? Let's just throw out $199. Um, I'd be happy as shit. There's, there's no qualms about that. They're just a little different. You know, I don't know if there's anything that's necessarily like better. It's preference and stuff like that. But, um, so I think regardless, we would be looking to do some kind of project slip joint wise with both of these guys. So like we might next time we need a slip joint made, we'll use the other one or whatever. Um, so I just want to make it clear that I'm really pleased with both so far um yeah very cool all right there you go guys just want to give you a little look at the new prototypes from qsp of our nip slip design let me know in the comments if you're excited oh uh oh interesting so <laughs> that's I don't think this is glued in. So I think maybe they left it like that so that we could see it. Um, it just like fell out on me there. So it's possible they just do that so that you can see underneath. Um, Cause I don't see, yeah, I don't see any glue in there. I carried this today and didn't notice. Let me just try this one. I wonder if they left that one not glued and they glued this one for some reason. I've never even thought about it. I just assumed they were all glued in there. But here's the inside. So you can see there is a locating hole. That's not, um, that's not a screw hole. I mean, technically you could, there's no threads. Technically, you we could make it where that gets screwed in, but we want it to be glued because it just looks better without a screw in there. Um, and they make amazing adhesives that are never coming off, so it's not like a worry or anything. Um, honestly, I could probably just slap some super glue on this and put it in here, and it would probably be fine for a long time. Um, but I'm going to send one of these to Colin to uh, obviously get his thoughts and you know so we can figure out what we want to do. So I'll probably send him this one. Ow. Uh, that wasn't good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, you know what I have right here? Got a little Devo knives, band-aid dispenser that we got for the show. And, um, mm, doesn't hurt cause it was a, uh, clean stab into the palm there or into the finger. But she's going to start bleeding. Uh, what I was saying was... Going to send one to Colin. So maybe it'd be cool. He might want to see it under the hood there a little bit. Um, I don't think that's a concern that it came off. I think that's just... Uh, I think they were leaving it for us on purpose like that. I need another one of these just to... So it comes with... Uh, it comes with a decent number of band-aids. I mean, there's like five in there or something. So we handed these out at Blade West. Um, they were a hit. That was the idea. I actually ordered them um, the Friday before, and I was leaving on Wednesday. And I just was like, let's order some something. And they have 24-hour service at... Uh, it's called 4imprint. And I got them on Tuesday. Or no, I got them on, when did I fly? Wednesday. I got them that day at, at like 11 a.m. And then I flew out. Uh, I left my house at like uh, 12. So it, they literally came an hour before I left. We just got them in the nick of time. So it's sharp. I'll tell you that much. It's freaking sharp. That thing came down. 
I was just talking and it just got me. But yeah, I'll send this one to Colin so uh, we can get his thoughts on everything. And uh, that way, if he wants to see under there, he'll have access to it. Um, but yeah, these are amazing. I, I'm really excited. Um, I just, I really like the walk and talk on this. I thought I was like super stoked on this and I am. But it is very strong. A lot of people say that. And there's a little hitch right here that people have mentioned. There's like a little notch that either got machined in or, you know, maybe the spring because of the way we were talking about that tang sticking up caused some kind of issue. But this, <laughs> I mean, beautiful. Just beautiful. Perfect spring tension in my opinion. Not a struggle, easy to one hand, but feels crisp, feels bouncy. That's that's what you need, right? Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, I'm going to shut up. I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.